Some people familiar at Bloomberg broke that the Trump administration is actually stepping back from negotiations on a new stimulus package, really leaving it up to Mitch McConnell, who's speaking on the Senate floor, and the, the Senate majority leader saying he's not interested in a dramatically larger stimulus. There should be one, but there should be the one they talked about in September and October. Paul, can we really bet on more stimulus, or is it all going to be about central banks? So uh, the, the thing is, this is a crisis which doesn't need central bank support. It does need fiscal support. The problem we've got is for the last 40 years, we've got used to the idea of central banks riding to the rescue. Because for the last 40 years, uh, most of the economic problems have been about credit or liquidity. Central banks are designed to deal with problems about credit and liquidity. But this isn't what's gone wrong this time. The problem this time is the government took your money away. The government stopped you from working. The government told businesses to close. And so it's down to fiscal policy to replace that lost income if we are going to support the economy going forwards. Secondary role for central banks, the primary focus has to be on fiscal policy, I think. Paul was that she is going to facilitate that. What she said yesterday that was she was going to continue to drive money uh, into the system. That money was likely to be used for buying things like BTPs, which would encourage yields to go lower and therefore would encourage governments to spend money. Isn't that the argument? So there is a case for this, um, and the, you know, that is what's happening. I mean, part of the problem in Europe, of course, is you, you don't have, you know, even with the recovery fund, we don't yet have you know, a proper functioning monetary union with a central fiscal authority. We're still some way away from that, though fortunately moving in the right direction. So absolutely, central banks are there to provide orderly markets, but this is the junior role. They're not deciding the scale of what happens. It's not up to them to say, right, you know, this is, this is how we inject um, uh, uh, money back into the economy. I mean, look, central banks have printed about $7.5 trillion uh, over the last nine months, give or take. Uh, $6.5 trillion of that $7.5 trillion still in the central banks. Um, it's not down to the central banks to do anything other than support and provide liquidity. It is down to the governments to actually implement stimulus in the wider economy. Uh, I mean, I, I hear you. I think we can all agree with you. But if you don't get it, what are some le levers that the central banks can pull? Like basically wind up paying banks uh, to lend more, for example. Um, I mean, are, are there some little tweaks there that can really somehow make a difference? Well, this is, again, we're coming back to the problem. We don't really have a credit crisis. This isn't because there's a lack of credit in the economy. It's because governments shut down the economy. That's, that's why we've got this situation. Plus, we've got ongoing structural changes. These are not problems central banks are designed to deal with. You know, it, it's, there's no point sort of taking a sledgehammer when you need a screwdriver to do the job. Uh, and that's basically where we are at the moment. So there's a limit, a, a very significant limit on what central banks can do. It's not that they've run out of ammunition. Central banks have got plenty of ammunition, but they're fighting a different war from the one that we're facing at the moment.